halfway down the trail to hell, in a shady meadow green. Are the souls of all dead troopers camped near a good old time canteen? And this eternal resting place is known as Fiddler's Green. Marching past straight through to hell, the infantry are seen, accompanied by the engineers, artillery, and marines, for none but the shades of cavalry men dismount at Fiddler's Green. Fiddler's Green. Sherman, and I am grateful that you'll be with me and all of us forever. Thank you. the U.S. 11th Armored Cavalry are on the front line in West Germany. Their commander, Colonel John Sherman Crow. So East Germany is about 100 yards from here. Almost exactly 100 yards from here. And you genuinely expect that if there were an attack, there would be an attack with chemical weapons? Without a doubt. They will fire both conventional and chemicals. There's not a doubt in my mind about that. And you believe that for a while, anyway, you can defend against chemical attack? Very definitely. Very definitely. A dawn alert at the barracks of the U.S. 11th Armored Cavalry in West Germany. This exercise was put on for us, but the unit has similar surprise alerts at least once a month. 
The soldiers take this exercise with deadly seriousness, for if an attack from the forces of the Warsaw Pact ever comes, and many of the troops stationed here are convinced it will, this unit would be one of the first to be bloody. Chemical warfare is nothing more, Mr. Wallace, than uh, an added dimension to the conventional battlefield. If you're able to protect yourself, then you'll survive on the battlefield. This regiment today, the 11th Cavalry Regiment, will survive on a chemical environment. When you say we'll survive, you don't mean to say that you're not going to take any casualties I, under chemical attack from the other side. I would never be that... Uh, uh, Much of a damn fool. That's right. <laughs> And when they cross that border, though, Mr. Wallace, that's World War III. And uh, they're going to use everything they've got available, in my view. We absolutely just have no real experience on those requirements, medical requirements, for chemical casualties. Let's say that they were this afternoon to move against you. Do you have the retaliatory capacity here? No, I do not in the regiment. I'm not authorized any chemical munitions in my basic load. So in spite of the fact that they did it first. You couldn't do anything. No, I could not. In fact, in order to retaliate with chemical weapons, Colonel Crow's commanders in Europe would have to request permission all the way up the line to the President of the United States. And that could take uh, longer than perhaps uh, this regiment will be fighting in the initial stages of a war. So Colonel, in the event of a chemical attack, it's the civilian populations that are going to get most severely hurt downwind. For instance, this little village over here, that's in West Germany, and across the fence, that village over there in East Germany. The civilian population of each of those towns is going to get beat up, and the casualties are going to be how severe? Massive. Complete. Because they're not protected the way your troops are. That is correct. They will lose. They will lose virtually everybody in those two villages, certainly. One gets the impression that chemical warfare is simply a logistics nightmare and, Colonel, it doesn't seem worth the effort for either side. I would totally agree that it certainly is not worth the effort. But uh, we can't afford not to be prepared. And I suppose they feel the same way over there. Precisely. Here in Europe, the forces of East and West directly face each other. And it's the only place where they do. When they met here in 1945, they were allies. The mood is different now, and the preparations are not for peace. When you've got soldiers who are busy, who are doing the things that they're gonna have to do when the war starts, because the initial things that my troopers will be doing is scouting. And as soon as the major formations are detected, then we will kill them. We have a, a dual mission, really, one of uh, surveilling the east-west German border on a day-to-day -day basis, 365 days a year. Uh, and uh, while doing that, preparing for war, preparing to defend in case that uh, the Warsaw Pact would decide to, to move to the west. Colonel John Sherman Crow, NATO frontline commander, has definite views on how the Soviets will play out their part. Highly motor, uh, motorized, uh, armored, very volatile, chaotic, ruthless, mechanized attack with tanks, uh, armored infantry carriers, uh, chemical weapons. Tremendous amounts of artillery, indirect fire, and certainly a significant, significant amount of, uh, of air on his part.
Hey. Stop. Present. Oh. ashes to their resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. O Almighty God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, by a voice from heaven this proclaim, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Multiply, we beseech thee, to those who rest in Jesus, the manifold blessings of thy love, that the good work which thou didst begin in them may be made perfect unto the day of Jesus Christ. And of thy mercy, O Heavenly Father, grant that we now serve thee on earth. 